Good morning. And welcome as we gather on this beautiful, gorgeous day uh, on this weekend. Um, it's good to have everybody here as we all come in. I think everybody slept late this morning. Um, and it's good to have you here. A um, couple of things going on. First of all, today at 1 o'clock, you get to try your bocce skills. If you come out for uh, our bocce um, Bible in bocce over across the street at the bocce court. Um, we'll see how that goes. You can all watch me make a fool of myself. Um, that's always good for a laugh. And um, so come on out if you can, one o'clock at the bocce court. Uh, we'll have a little, um, little quick uh, devotions and then uh, head off into the, uh, into the activity of the day. Uh, so I know there's all kinds of things planned over there. Um, other than that, Vacation Bible School is rapidly coming up August 7th. If you haven't signed up your kiddos for that, please do. Um, it's down at the Christ Episcopal Church uh, starting on August 7th that week. Um, and then there's the back-to-school donations that are needed. Please check that out in the back of your bulletin. Those are um, items from North Hills Community Outreach as they uh, pack up some backpacks for kids with school supplies. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I encourage you to read it all and see what's up. But other than that, any other joys or concerns? Yeah. Karen. Just to expand a little bit on what we get, this week we should have received from their this week's education on email. Um, there's a link there for the All right. Uh, just to clarify, these can be um, used T-shirts, right? They're not, they're not new. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. All righty. Hey, we're Episcopals and Lutherans. Come on. Anyway, um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, what's the name again? Verna. All righty. And then also we want to know uh, Kurt Lieb. Um, she, he got injured um, while he was working doing lawn stuff, and he had hurt his retina. And uh, he had surgery on that and is recovering. So, so we want to keep him in our prayers as well. Anybody else? If not, let us stand and uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we join in our confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your peoples, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, things we have failed to do. 
turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and with compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we turn to God's holy word. A 
reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. But you, O oh Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to preserve her and save the child out of her hands. Show me the sign of your favor, that I may see the A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits and with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation has subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom and the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then you want us to go out and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and then bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. (coughs) The field is the world, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the ages, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all the causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth." Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you on this day. In the name of God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So St. Paul writes in his letter to the Christians in Rome... We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly. Creation knows. We know that something is not right. Things are just wrong. Bad things happen. In our lives, they happen to others. Bad things happen in the world. We know evil exists. And it is frustrating that we have so little control over it. I mean, the political reality show that plays out daily on the news channel seems far away from our lives, but will ultimately affect us or those we love. Individuals often seem to be the pawns of big business and corporate decisions and big government, if they're considered at all. The destruction of God's creation continues just for the sake of profit or progress. The threat of violence and mass shootings looms out there, threatens to creep in here, but more people actually die in car accidents each year, and that pain is just as real as the families, real to those families, that are involved. 
Violence and death are on the nightly news. And then there's the evils of addiction and the specter of fatal overdoses that rob so many people still of life. We don't hear it in the news every day, but it still is there. And we feel so helpless in the midst of it. We feel helpless when the cancer comes back. We feel helpless when our job goes away, when relationships end, when depression sets in, when a loved one's life is cut short, when war and famine force thousands to flee as refugees, and when the world turns its back on people in need, we feel helpless. These are the times we sense that this world is not what God intended. And that, at times, can seem unbearable. And the, tempt and the temptation is there to blame God. Why do you let this happen? Too often I've heard at funerals words like, it must be God's will, or, oh, the one I do not like at all, God needed another angel. Or, don't worry, it's part of God's plan. Someone says to someone else after a tragedy. Or, don't worry, God never gives us more than we can handle. All of those are non-biblical, not Christian, and in the long run, really unhelpful. As if God is the one that's responsible for sin, evil, disease, and death, our tragedies are not part of God's plan. God never, ever wants suffering for people. God brings abundant life. God, though, is present with us in the midst of those times of sorrow, with those dealings with tragedy and grief. And according to St. Paul, in the midst of it all, though God doesn't cause it, God works for the good in all things. The chief example of this is the cross itself. The cross offers proof that real evil happens. Human power, greed, and fear are all used by evil in the passion story, if you think about it. And yet, it's not strong enough to de defeat God's love. Even death and the tomb could not defeat God, that God is committed to staying with us through even the most difficult of circumstances, and that in love, God can and will work through the worst of times that sin and evil has and continue to be defeated. And that is a good place to turn to our gospel where Jesus tells in our reading from Matthew this parable that begins, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. Who did it? An enemy. Later on we find out the devil. The enemy. It was not God that placed those weeds in the field. Now, you don't have to believe in a little red-suited red devil with a pitchfork and a pointy tail to name the reality of sin and brokenness and evil that are in the world. They're very real, and we all know it. But it's important to acknowledge that God does not design or desire the evil. But the seeds of the enemy have sprouted among us. And like the workers in the field, it can be frustrating and angering, wanting to do something about it. 
to pull those weeds, to slap somebody upside the head, to rip out evil where it is, pull it out by the root, no matter what the consequences is or are, no matter who is damaged or destroyed or lives are ruined in the process. Nuke them. Let them kill each other. Let it burn. Those are all words you hear. Refuse medical care to some. Do not allow desperate and vulnerable people a safe haven in our country because there might be a few bad ones among them. At what cost to innocent lives and the very soul of our society? The parable describes the damage to the wheat. If you try to pull out those weeds, you end up uprooting everything. I know, I've I pulled out some weeds out of my landscaping in front, and I tell you, I get one weed and I pull out a hunk of dirt this big. The roots spread. And while sometimes you can identify a weed, often, especially with wheat, cannot tell the difference from grass and immature wheat. They look the same until they mature and bear seeds. Also, some plants actually help others grow by loosening the soil or resisting insects. So it's really difficult to tell. So wait until the harvest and all will be sorted out. In today's quick to anger and seemingly just as quick to come to judgment culture that's lived out in the Twitter sphere and 24 hour talking heads on what pretends to be news channels, perhaps it's best to allow the final judgment of others to be in God's hands. We rarely really know what motivates people to speak and act and live as they do. And we certainly can't understand it when everything's done in 40 characters or less on Twitter. And while we may oppose their words and actions, it's not up to us to remove them from the power of God's redemptive love we can't take them away from God's love by taking judgment into our own hands. And it's always helpful when staring in the face of evil to remember the immortal words of that comic strip Pogo from long ago. We have met the enemy and he is us. Because if we look in the mirror, will we see a wheat plant or a weed? Or maybe both? At the heart of our Lutheran faith is the understanding that each of us are at the very same time both saint and sinner. And that even when we know what is just and good, like Paul in Romans 7 said, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. That weed, that we are both weed and wheat. Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote, the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. I think it's important to recognize the evil that we hate and the brokenness that it brings that runs through all aspects of life and each community and each family and each person. This does not mean we should tolerate evil by no means or perpetuate the justice, no, injustice no, we can and are encouraged to work against evil and for the good in ourselves, in our communities, in our families, and in the world. In our baptism covenant, we promise to seek justice and pursue peace. But ultimately, it is and will be up to God. I love in Martin Luther's catechism where it says, you know, thy kingdom come, and the explanation for the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. I 
cannot make your kingdom come without you, God. Luther writes something, I'm paraphrasing. You ca I cannot make this ki your kingdom come by myself. I simply ask that I can be a part of it. We are impatient. We're waiting for God's redemption, and it is difficult to wait in the midst of so much pain and angst and anger. We wait, like all of creation, in that pregnant pause for the birth of God's new creation. And it is trusting in God that God will redeem the world that we are free to take the responsibility for caring for our little corner of it. You don't have to defeat evil and death. That's God's job. God's job. God already took care of that. But you can care for your neighbor. Forgive your enemy to speak out against injustice. Support those in need right here and now right where we find ourselves today. Nurture the wheat right where it is, right there in the midst of all the weeds. Amen. boldly profess the faith we hold in common using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life, and the life of everlasting. Amen. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth, both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit bearing witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policy makers to protect lands and seas. Bring rain to sun-parched fields and protect areas impacted by catastrophic heat and flooding. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred Watch over police officers and firefighters, and teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction, especially Nancy, Kurt, Bob, Carol, Warren, Kelly, Baby Poppy, Baby Lily, Megan, Liz, Barb, Gary, Carol, Dan, Maria, Ellie, Steve, Bob, Jerry, Joan, Jeff, Verna, Cindy, and babies Brady and Jackson those on our shut-in list, and those we now name before you. Sustain your people living with HIV AIDS. Provide shelter for all who are unhoused and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. We thank you that throughout the generations you have raised up men and women to serve your church in all times and in all places. Lead us, O oh Lord, to be about the work of your kingdom even as the search for a new pastor continues. Guide the work of our call committee as the interviewing for candidates continues. Bless all who have taken on extra responsibility in this time of transition and fill them with a sense of your love and presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You name each of us as your children. Guard our hospitality ministry to welcome all. Our education ministry to equip us for faithful living, and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You send faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. <coughs> Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed so that we live into the same hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all of creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share this gift of peace. Let's be with you.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them all on all their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Cristo. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world that more and more we will give you praise and serve you, earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.